Since the earliest days of the COVID pandemic, people have been looking for treatments to minimize the severity of the virus. One of the more controversial treatments has been ivermectin, with some people swearing by it, yet most of the research does not support the efficacy of its use compared to placebo. Now, there is new research out that has the types of higher dosing protocols that many of ivermectin's supporters have been asking for. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. Hope everything is going well with you. Uh, thanks again to all of our supporters and to all the subscribing and liking all the thing that I ask you for. I'm trying to do that a little shorter now. Um, but it's been about five months since I have done any stories about ivermectin. And of course, this is a medication that is widely used worldwide for treating parasites. Um, this is a medication that actually the, the development of it led to a Nobel Prize in medicine um, for its use and how many people it's safe for the parasitic d diseases. But early in the protocol, in the, in the protocols being used for COVID, one of the treatment protocols that came forth was from the frontline COVID critical care team which was using ivermectin and using doses that were similar to start off with, uh, that were being used for the parasite disease, although higher doses, not tremendously higher doses, were used and, and some felt were to be more um, effective than the original doses that were put forward. Now, to me, it was rather insulting what the FDA and the media did for this treatment. And I believe in some part of it is because of, in all honesty, from a partisan perspective, because it does seem as if one um, side of the political aisle was pushing it more than the other. But, you know, medicine and science has to go through a process. There should be a theory. One should test the theory. One should then do a study. Then you should put it on the shelf and do another study and do another study until some better conclusion is reached. Okay. And I thought it was actually um, pretty insulting when the FDA came out and with that big banner saying, you are not a horse. Don't take ivermectin. When it's an FDA approved, approved medication for humans to use for parasites disease. So they were making it seem as if this FDA approved treatment was a crazy thing for people to be doing. Now, granted, there were people who were using a veterinary horse paste pro version of this that didn't necessarily have the same types of dosing. And there were a few people who did overdose and taking too much and get GI upset, etc. But from everything that I can tell, Using ivermectin of the types of doses that are being advocated that are FDA approved is really seemingly one of the safer medications that are out there. Now, of course, I'm not talking about effectiveness at all, but of course, as a physician, we always should be we, the, the, the oath that we swore the day we graduated med school above all do no harm. Right. We'll get back to that. OK, now, one of the things also about ivermectin, which did make it a very um, attractive option, was the fact that it was very cheap. It was safe, um, and it was very available, too, okay? And, of course, if you're going to come up with a treatment that is going to maybe treat other people, you'd want all of those things to be there, and it, and it was, and so check that box. It was there, right? Now, the Frontline COVID Critical Care Alliance, which is the FLCCA, um, CCCA, they are the ones who first formally put together. Now, these were a lot of frontline doctors, um, doctors who were treating COVID on a daily basis, and they were making uh, observations. Of course, other people were not willing to do it, but, the, but these doctors were. And they came up with a protocol using ivermectin for five days at a per body weight um, dosing that no matter how, what your weight was, there was a, it was a, you had, you had to multiply it. And they were at first advocating 200 to 400, then 400 to 600 micrograms per kilogram of body weight. Okay. Now that was being used. Um, and they would, of course, they recommended getting started as soon as possible. Now they did state, however, and what the protocol currently does state is that you should start it on the very first signs of any flu like illness. And of course, we know that all, not all COVID, not all first flu-like illness is COVID. In fact, there's flu causes flu-like illness. But there's adenoviruses, other coronaviruses, um, Coxsackie viruses sometimes can cause it. There are all the um, RSV, rhinoviruses can cause flu-like symptoms. And they're recommending that everybody start taking it um, regardless of the virus. Hey, some of my immune support protocol, in fact, most of my immune support protocol is regardless of what the virus is, um, so regardless of that. So that to me wasn't necessarily a flag um, for it. 
but it is the thing. But and the and the protocol that the FLCCC put forth and has published to this day does involve most of the other treatments that I have been advocating for on the first signs of illness for our COVID protocol, for every other illness that I've used for the last 25 years that are of infectious nature, do include those things like vitamin D and, and zinc um, and acetylcysteine or glutathione to keep um, uh, inf inflammation down, high-dose omega-3 fatty acids to keep inflammation down. And all of those are in that protocol, okay? But as I said, there really has not been a tremendously large number of well-published studies um, that have been like, you know, placebo-controlled, peer-reviewed, etc., on ivermectin, especially the ones that had been put forth. But, you know, most of the research was done outside the country. Maybe that's because people in the country in America have been afraid to use it um, because of how political it got, etc. Um, but to say that there was no studies whatsoever that showed it to be um, effective, that wouldn't be a true statement either. And you know me, I try to put the data out there as much as I can. I will certainly give you my assessment on everything. But, you know, so often we get put into these corners and everybody's kind of fighting from that corner and it doesn't matter what else is out there. This is their stance and that's where they come. And that's not the way I approach medicine. That's not the way medicine is supposed to be approached for that matter. Now, um, as more studies were published um, and not showing success, I would be hearing from supporters of medicine, oh, they were using too long of a dose, uh, too small of a dose. Oh, they were starting it too late. Oh, they um, did it for too short of a period of time. All valid things that people can um, can can point out, right? A, a research is only as good as the research is and the way that the protocol is set up. There's no such thing as a perfect research study, no matter what it is about or who did it. Now, um, the um, but they, you know some of the things that I said they were using the 200 to 400 micrograms per kilo. They were treating for three days. Um, that's what the research that I was mostly seeing was. Now, here comes along a new research study that was just published um, recently in JAMA, um, which is the, um, you know, the Journal of the American Medical Association. Okay. Now, this was part of the Active 6 platform trial that was led by the, a group of doctors from Duke. But, um, and it went from July of 2022 to, um, I'm sorry, from uh, January of 2022 to, um, um, I'm sorry, I'll say that one more time. From February 2022 to July of 2022, it was at 93 different sites across America, and there were, I believe, 19 different universities um, that were involved um, in this, for, you know, lots of, from all over the place. There were 1,206 patients enrolled, of which half of them got placebo, so about 600, and 600 got the actual treatment, okay? And they were given the 600 microgram per kilograms, and they were given it for six days, okay? So that met two of the criteria that supporters who said that there was no research that were taking these higher doses and longer courses. It This is in this study, okay? This is here, okay? Now, what they did is they were looking at from the time to, uh, of start of symptoms to the 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 end of sustainable um symptoms so you know maybe there's a little something but but it has to be 11 11 days until recovery okay and what they found actually it wasn't they were looking to see how many days until recovery what they found is that in both the placebo group as well as the trivermectin treatment group it was the same 11 days there was no difference seen between these two groups okay now they also found that hospitalizations urgent care or emergency room visits, um, um, deaths, they were, uh, and you put all that category together, it was also the same, right about 6% for placebo or for the treatment group. Now, um, they did also find that there was no increase in adverse effects, no side effects from the, uh, from the ivermectin versus the um versus the treatment versus the placebo group which is for those of us who know about ivermectin not surprising because really whenever i've heard of a patient taking ivermectin the one thing i don't hear is that a, there's a side effect from it when taking the the fda approved doses so that's not surprising and this confirms that and that's a good thing in terms of from a safety perspective okay um but they actually looked at um, both high and low risk groups so about 25 percent of the individuals in each group had hypertension 15 percent had asthma about nine percent had diabetes so it was even amongst these two groups in terms of those who were more at risk okay and so really what does this show that there's no difference at least in this study between treatment group with ivermectin as well as placebo now a couple of things about this 
84% of the people who received the, who were in the study, whether they were given the um, placebo or the treatment, were vaccinated. So is it possible that in an unvaccinated population that there could be a difference? Could be. We don't know because that's not what was studied. Can only say this: the, the data is based upon the information provided to us. So there was no difference there. Maybe there could have been difference. Who knows? I like to point out all the different possibilities. Okay, um, um, but of course we know there may be even a, some self-selection because we know that unvaccinated people are people who are more likely to want and ask for ivermectin in the first place. That's fair. I don't necessarily know that, that would make a difference here because that seems to be controlled for. But it's a point to point out regarding this. Now. What they also did is 30% of the end of the people started the treatment or placebo within three days of the onset of symptoms and 60% within five days. So most people were started on the earlier side. Now, of course, the um, FLCCC is saying on the very first sign of any illness. And of course, that's not what this is. Maybe that would be a thing if it started. But also, I can totally see why an institutional review board for an investigational medicine is not going to have everybody start taking it on the very first sign of any illness. They want to have some evidence that they are treating people who actually have the disease. So again, that could have been a difference. Maybe if everybody started on day one, there would have been a difference. Who knows? But again, this is the data that we are reporting that there wasn't a difference. Okay. Now, um, it has also been brought up that, um, that the treatment that was used in this particular study was only ivermectin or placebo, and wasn't doing all of the other things that are part of the FLCCC protocol. So is it possible that the whole protocol together would have made a difference where ivermectin wouldn't have? It's, well, alone wouldn't have. It's possible. But there's another consideration there. Considering that for the most part, I have not used ivermectin in my patients, and I've done these other things, and they've done remarkably well. I think it's fair to ask, is it possible that the FLCCC protocol would have been just as successful if ivermectin, but all of those other treatments were not? Okay, it's possible. Again, that's not the data we have. We only can refer to what we see, but that's another possibility that maybe it wasn't the, it's not the ivermectin of other things. But I do know of people who have started ivermectin without taking any of the other supplements who do claim that they saw immediate turnarounds, and they're claiming that they're seeing it with other viral illnesses as well. Again, that is purely anecdotal, but... I know I want to trust and pe hear people's stories. And of course, if they're telling me how different that their stories are relative to when they've had other infections, it's something that I put into my brain, something that I want to take into consideration. And certainly something when I'm in consultation with the patient and they're asking me about different things and different treatments, that's something that I would be comfortable sharing. So above all, though, coming back to what I said before, a physician's responsibility is to do no harm. Okay, is there harm in taking ivermectin? Not from what I can tell, with the exception of one possibility. Might a person who do it delay starting other treatments that may or may not be effective in treating their COVID? So we don't know, right? So that would be really the only thing that I wonder. Maybe uh, there would be a more effective treatment that would have been started if, a, if they would have presented. We know that there are protocols for things like, you know, short courses of steroids and other types of things. Um, of course, there's Paxlovid out there, Remsmafir, which isn't really being used as a monoclonal anymore because of, this, because of the change in the variants. So, of course, all those things are, are things that one should be discussing with their primary care provider when deciding what the best course of action would be for themselves or their families. So, as usual, I hope I gave you some food for thought. Have a nice day.